Hello Beauty News family! Welcome to Beauty News. This is the 5th of March edition. We're going to be talking about new release beauty products and look we do kind of have something that you might consider an update but we're just going to talk about it when we get to it. Yeah. We're going to go, <laughs> you and I are both doing the same thing. Eh, eh, it's not a big deal. <laughs> um, we're just going to go down the list in alphabetical order and we're actually going to start with something super topical. Becca. So it it would seem that Becca is closing down as of September this year. So they made a statement that said, you're all our Becca family, part of this beautiful community that supports us and shares our values. It's because of our love for each other that we are sharing with you now some very important news about the closing of our brand in 2021. Um, and they talk about how the global pandemic has had an impact on everyone around the world on many levels. It's also had a tremendous impact on so many businesses. At Becca, an accumulation of challenges together with the global impact of COVID-19 has sadly been more than our business can withstand. And we have had to make the heartbreaking decision to close down the Becca brand at the end of 2021. So this has been faced with uh, what personally I've seen two types of reactions. I have seen people saying that this is really sad. Um, Becca has, you know, been a massive part of the all makeup lovers community, basically. Um, and obviously this is going to affect a lot of people because a lot of people are going to be losing jobs. Uh, I'm in that category. I think this is really sad. So am I. Basically. Mm -hmm. And then we've seen people who are like, good, they were fucking shit anyway. So there's and that. And then I think then there's also a lot of people who are like, yeah, Becca's gone. Who's next? Let's chop yeah. off these brands yeah. that are like not up to scratch. And yeah. look, I understand that mentality. And I feel like, I feel like people expect probably that reaction from us because we've been quite yeah. harsh with Becca's most recent releases, releases. or let's yeah. be real, releases from the past few mm. years. I think they do yeah. have the occasional thing that comes out that we're like, oh, I'm interested. Like the last one I remember when they brought out their last liquid illuminators, I was like, look, I mm -hmm. love their first ones. They were like a cult product. I would love to try the new ones. Pandemic hit, I never bothered wearing illuminating like liquid stuff, so I didn't try it. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, one of my favourite highlighters of all time is Berlin Girl Glow. Um, so oh, they do have beautiful. some really beautiful things. And even though, again, we've been quite harsh on them, um, it is. I think it's really sad to see this happen. Yeah. And I, I do question whether it was the... I feel like COVID might have been the straw that broke the camel's back, but I yeah. don't feel like COVID was the only no. cause because I do no. feel like in the beauty community... Um, Becca peaked back when they released Champagne Pop and um, definitely earlier than that Jaclyn Hill was one of the YouTubers that started the really highlighting like crazy trend about mm -hmm. six or seven years ago um, and Becca highlighters were known for being super intense same as like Ofra as well it's the same sort of vibe as that and that's what really catapulted them into another level of cult product the the becca highlighters so i feel like they peaked then and they just didn't know what to do with themselves and they just didn't know how to keep the momentum going um and they were definitely trying to release some innovative things like that zero fucking foundation thing yeah didn't hit the mark just that they just no. didn't hit the mark yeah look i okay so i got a few things to say but i think the most important thing i want to say and i think you'll probably agree with this cat mm. When we critique brands, including Becca and all the others, it's not because we think they're shit and we want to see them fail. It's no. because we think they're missing the fucking point. Yeah. They're releasing boring ass products, shit that's old and boring that nobody Champagne really Champagne pop wants. in like 25 different versions, yet 
Berlin Girl Glow, which is a super unique and very, very, very stunning highlighter. It's like they just were like, yeah, we released it, but let's just pretend it never happened. Why aren't you yeah, re-releasing that right. and putting that in different yeah. formats and putting that in liquid and putting that in cream and putting that in palettes? Because that is a standout fucking highlighter and I just yeah. don't know why. It's like they just haven't been guided by the right people who are like, it's like their board yes. is just like saying, let's do the same shit because we know it works, but that only yeah. works for like a certain amount of time. And then they've, they've let things that are really fantastic slip through their fingers because they don't realize what they have. I do agree with you. Like w when we do critique a release and we say it's boring or we've seen this before, we're not coming for a pitchforks and being like, I wish Becca no. closed. We like Becca no. and believe it or not, Becca I'm wearing Becca today. <laughs> yeah, like, Becca originated as an Australian brand. And the yeah. thing that I think is such a sad part about this is they started as being like the beachy sort of brand. They had um, these beach tints that were like cheek and lip tints and a lot of like liquid illuminators and things that um, have that sort of natural, really gorgeous, mm. perfected look. And then they were bought out. They, you know, moved to the US. Then they were bought out by Estee Lauder and that's when they yes. turned shit. So yep. that's where they just didn't put much innovation or they tried no. but missed the market, like it just didn't land. Mm. But the thing that I find really sad, where they started is what is popular now. Those yep. beach tints and lip tints would be very similar to something like um, the M Cosmetic Serum blush and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. These are things yeah. that are starting to become really popular, but they never bothered reviving those in this time where they could thrive. Instead, they've just been misguided in where they should, what they should release. And I think that's the sad mm -hmm. thing about this. There's so much potential and at the core of it, Becca is a really good brand. Um, it's just sad to see that Estee Lauder must have made like a, you know, they must have a just looked at the books and said, loose. we can't be bothered. Yeah. I suspect that the brand has been losing for many, many years. Um, I don't think this is just like, I think COVID was the tiny, tiny little piece of straw that broke the camel's back where they or, were like, all right. Or the convenient sorry, excuse. On. Oh, yeah. That. Yeah. Um, that is definitely a possibility. I think Estee Lauder, you know, I another comment that I've been seeing a lot about this incident is that Estee Lauder tanked the brand, essentially. Um, a lot of people are a bit like, oh, Estee Lauder buys up big brands, lets them tank to get them off the market. And, no, you know, I don't think absorb... that. I, I don't think that's actually the case. I don't think it's as uh, sinister as that. I think the issue is that Estee Lauder is just a little bit archaic and kind of not hip with the times. It's like if my grandmother tried to create a makeup brand, it would be like, please stop, you're embarrassing all of us. Um, I If you look at the brands that are underneath Estee Lauder that are making makeup, none of them are particularly great. I think the only, I mean three that we could talk about, MAC, need I say much more? They're not mm, super, super hip with the time. Sometimes they release cool things, most of the time it's boring. You've got um, Smashbox, again, mm. I personally feel like the big driving force that keeps Smashbox relevant these days, and let me know if you think this is true, Kat, is their formulas. Sometimes mm -hmm. they hit the nail on the head with an amazing formula product, and it gets traction in the beauty community, which makes it go viral and people want to buy it. And then we have Too Faced. And I mean, we know what a lot of people think of Too Faced. The issue is innovation. Yeah. and releasing interesting products. Um, like I mentioned in reference to Smashbox, formula can go a long way. If you've got a good formula and someone picks up on it who's got a large online following in the beauty community, it can totally make a product take off. But that can't be all you've got. It can't just be throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. So yeah. when you look at Becca, it's all being quite bland and boring, same old shit, nothing interesting at all. Who wants another shimmery lip gloss? We're tired of it. And then 
zero pigment foundation, silicon in a fucking tub. Ooh, yeah. exciting. Yeah, I think where they went wrong was a to fix a dinosaur, a dinosaur bought the brand. Yes. I've seen a lot of people say that they're going to stock up because of their favorite highlighters. But if you put all your eggs in the highlighter basket, the problem with that is it takes you fucking 10 years to use up a highlighter. So you can't expect yep. people to keep repurchasing, repurchasing, repurchasing when it's like, no. I've got this thing that I've been using for five years and it's still almost going strong. Like you need to have yeah. more than just that to stay relevant. Yep. And that's where I think they almost push their highlighters and the same shades to a point where people were just like, la, 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 I don't care what else yeah. you have because flogging you're, a dead horse. you're flog, flogging a dead horse and I'm getting frustrated with you. So, yeah, I just feel like they could have gone somewhere great. And it's a real sad situation as well because, um, okay, yeah, again, COVID may have been the final straw or might have been a convenient mm. excuse. But the, at the end of the day, a lot of people would have lost their jobs um, yeah, and uh, really a well-respected brand uh, that, you know, has history in the makeup community, especially in Australia, um, because it originated here, um, it's going to be gone. And I, I do think that's really mm. sad. So there's that. I suppose it's an end of the era. A lot of people are asking, you know, who's going to be next? I, I mean, I can't think of any brands that might go downhill, but I'm also not at all surprised that Becca is closing. When I heard the news, I was like, yeah, kind of makes sense. They haven't yeah. really been doing anything interesting, have they? All right, next new item. We've got some new products from Dominique Cosmetics. Uh, there's a primer and a mist. They're calling this the Complexion Collection. Uh, they're saying this primer serum and hydrating mist duo is formulated with clean, oh, capitals, clean uh, ingredients to instantly deliver moisture to your complexion and lock in hydration for the ultimate glow. Um, available now when you're watching this. Uh, the Blur and Moisture Primer Serum is $28 US dollars. The Ultra Hydrating Mist is $32 US dollars. We can get it bundled $52 US dollars. They are saying that the primer is a gel serum formulated with celeporine. Celeporine? Yeah, I think that's right. Celeporine, celeporine 8. Celeporine 8. Uh, extract, which is, uh, it boosts moisture levels by 6,000%. Um, yeah. Well, That's they say hyaluronic acid. They say hyaluronic acid is like a thousand percent or something. So yeah, it's not yeah, yeah. unusual to hear this. Um, yeah. It's a lot though. It's a big number. Um, and yeah. also it contains a unique sugar complex to stimulate and sustain moisture in the skin. Um, and if you're into hydration and clean, Fuck, I hate the word Glow! clean. I fucking hate the word clean in, in beauty yeah. products. Like We don't we don't stand that around here. We find no. it quite obnoxious and rude. It's not like look, there, there's no toxic ingredients in beauty products, guys. Yeah. You yeah. can't put toxic waste in your, your primer. You just can't do it. It's illegal. No. So no. um That's yeah, clean is a fucking buzzword that is yep. just fear mongering and it preys on people's in, fears. And it's shaming other brands for not being as clean as us. Oh, get fucked. Yes. Very good. Yeah. So I wouldn't buy it for Go have a shower, personally. you dirty bitches. <laughs> 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 okay, let's move on to Fenty. Fenty yeah. who can almost do no wrong. Almost. Um, we almost. <laughs> almost. So this is body sauce. <laughs> So this is a blurring body tint that enhances the skin you're in with light to medium buildable coverage to even out and instantly blur away the appearance of blemishes and imperfections with seven shades for all skin types or skin tones. Sorry. Oh, is that what that's supposed uh, to so mean? This, I'm like, what's A W L? Yeah. A-W-L. Owl. So this is releaching. Mm. <laughs> Releasing on March 5th um, at Fenty Beauty, Sephora, Harvey Nichols, Boots UK and Sephora in JCPenney. Um, so this is, in case you didn't realise, this is for the body, not for the face. That's why there's only seven shades. Um, apparently your body doesn't need to match quite as well as your face does to your body. 
Yeah, <laughs> I did see um, a lot of people comment that this is sad to see from Fenty. So, you know, they're known oh, okay. for their full, you know, 50 shade range of foundation. Yeah, yeah. So why is your body only seven shades? Okay, this has that situation where it is um, probably sheerer than a normal foundation. So it can cover yeah. a lot more skin tones, but also... This is a product that not everyone is going to jump to. So if you were to invest in a and take up shelf space for 50 shades of a body foundation, I don't think it would be very wise in a business sense. Um, but at least what they have covered is like light through to the spectrum of deep. So mm. um, you should be able to find something that suits you well enough. And then hopefully if it's a popular product, they will flesh it out um, and have different undertones and whatnot. Um, I like this. People were a bit confused about what the difference between this and their body oil is. That is pretty much a shimmery sort of bronzy, not even bronzy, some shades are bronzy, but it's just a shimmery body oil that adds body glow oil. This to is your skin. This is makeup. Your, this is, yeah, yeah body found, foundation. Yeah. And um, it's not going to be for everyone. And I think in a pandemic, like this is semi irrelevant, but yeah, as I someone, agree. yeah, as someone who had a baby last year, I can tell you, you get random veiny legs that you never had before. Mm. And if I'm gonna go to an event, like an event, as like a birthday or a something, and wearing a nice dress, I find it distracting that I'm like, I can see marks on my legs that I've never had before. Yep. So That's I would fair. buy something like this. So it's not for everyone. Like when brands bring this out, they're not telling you. You should be ashamed of your skin head to toe and no. cover your, your whole body in foundation because I have seen people being like, what, they're telling me now that I have to wear body foundation? Isn't foundation no, enough? Not. No, it's about your confidence. They're not and telling it, you anything. If you don't want it, you don't, don't buy, buy it. it. But yeah. you also have to respect that there are people out there who do have scars, imperfections, yeah. marks on their body that they're embarrassed by. Yeah. And that's what this product does. I wouldn't buy it, not at this stage in my life. I don't feel like I need it, but obviously there are people who would buy it and who do need it. And yeah. look, I agree for us, we're leaving summer completely irrelevant. Everyone's mm -hmm. going to be wearing pants and long sleeve crap soon. It'll be a rare time that you're out in a dress with it without like stockings on or something. So I don't know if this would do super well in Australia at this time, but in America, you guys are coming into spring. People yeah. will buy this. Also, yeah. it's Fenty. Yeah, look, I think Fenty are doing some good stuff with their most recent releases. I would definitely go and pick up one of these and then pick up one of their powder foundations. Uh, the only kicker is that we can't swatch jack shit in Australia or no, the rest that's of the world because right. of the pandemic. So can I get a shade yep. match? No, I can't. So it's fucking annoying. But I would definitely try this. And I've got my baby's yeah. first birthday coming up and I've got some nice dresses I recently bought. I would be like, yes, I want foundation on my legs. Don't fucking stop me. Fenty, I'm coming Fair for enough. you. Fair enough. There is one thing I want to point out before we move on to the next thing. I don't think their lightest shade is light enough. No. Um, and I, I say this and I only point it out because I know that very, very fair people can have almost translucent skin. So you can see a lot more of like, you know, veining and things because Kat mentioned it. You can see that coming through the skin. And they would be someone who is basically a target market for this type of product. Yeah. So I definitely think they should have gone with a very, very light shade as well, but. Yeah, I feel like they should have expanded this to at least 10 shades for it to be yeah sort of as uh, wide reaching as they claim. I almost feel like Fenty and when brands do release these products, they almost see them as being a body foundation and a bronzing product as well, like a. yeah. Not a not a Makes fake sense. tanning, but like a bronzing product. But mm -hmm. you don't always want to look bronzed. Like sometimes you just want to look yeah. perfected. So I do think they should pad that out as well. Absolutely. Okay. This happened and it kind of took everyone by storm. And all I saw was, why hasn't this been done before? Um, really? Hip Dot. <laughs> yeah. <Fuck. laughs> Hip Dot have released a collection with Peeps. So it's Peeps brand. Uh, collection. There is an eyeshadow palette. It is a six pan pastel eyeshadow palette. There's a four piece 
sponge set that kind of looks like peeps if you squint mm. and there is <laughs> there is the bundle which contains the palette and the sponge set for 40 US dollars so the palette on its own is 24 US dollars and the sponge set is 16 US dollars this will be out by the time you're watching this video at hip dot and Ulta beauty um, I think this is relevant for the time like you know we're coming into Easter um, and I think it's cute enough I, I've got I'm in two minds about this I do agree that this mm -hmm. is a very appropriate Easter collection um, it's cute I get it I think the sponges yep. are the coolest part of this um, yeah, I they agree. look more like eggs to me than they do, peaks, they do. but whatever they look like um, those wobble things that you yeah, push yeah, over yeah. and they like pop back they up, pop back up. Yeah. yeah they do um i feel like the palette is forgettable but it does reflect yeah. the colors of peeps so that makes sense um i just you know yeah do we need easter makeup is my question that's what it comes down to do you need to buy oh, no makeup and for easter? like i've always said i kind of appreciate it because i'm I'm not allowed to have chocolate or I'm not supposed to have chocolate. Um, so having something that's not chocolate related is kind of cool. But basically I just skip the fun part of that um, holiday and enjoy it in other ways. I drink with my friends. But can I ask you a question? Would you prefer to be gifted this or would you prefer to be gifted like a really beautiful hourglass lipstick that you've been coveting? Like I yes, want the hourglass can, lipstick, you can, please. You can you can gift makeup as a replacement yeah. for chocolate, but does it have to yeah. be like this no. tacky no. and Easter no. themed? And I, I don't think I it would, does. I wouldn't want this. I don't no. want this. But also, okay, firstly, people pointed out the swatches and they are fucking bad. They are photoshopped to the shit. Oh yeah, they're photoshopped like, to the shit house. It looks like the swatches are levitating on uh, above the arm. Like it is so they bad. Are. But also, one thing I find interesting about this, from what I've heard, and we don't have peeps in Australia, so, and I'm glad no. we don't have them because they sound pretty gross. This is supposed to be like the grossest. Sugary ass marshmallow. Yeah, they're supposed to be like the grossest, like, lollies or candy around. So it's weird that they're like, yes. I suppose there's probably like a die hard peep sort of community yeah. that's just like, I fucking love that sugary marshmallow <laughs> shit. Um, and, you know, have your palette and your little... The sponges are cute. I'll give them yeah. The sponges are cute. Yeah, the sponges are cute. They've got a little, like, peep-style face on them. So that's very cute. This is what I've come to expect from Hit Dot. It's like, you know, kind of... It's makeup that's... It's nostalgic makeup. They're mm -hmm. basically, like, a nostalgic brand. They did a collection with Kesha. They did this. They did Spongebob. My I think Chemical they did Romance. SpongeBob twice. Yeah, My Chemical Romance. This is literally... The hot sauce. They did the hot sauce. The hot sauce. That's right. Yeah. I don't actually know if this brand has ever done anything that isn't hitting on some sort of nostalgia or love. They, they have, but they're the things that don't get talked about. They've got like glitter, pressed boring. glitter palettes and stuff. They do. Oh. They do. But I feel like what they're doing, and I don't know if people will agree, I feel like they're trying to position themselves as a ColourPop competitor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cheap, nasty, and nostalgia. Not with those and fucking fast. swatches, you're fast. not. Yeah, that's true. Shush. Yeah, yeah. Get a, get a better <laughs> photographer and, uh, yeah, don't Photoshop your swatches. They look like crap. All right, we've got a nail polish thing, and we don't really talk about nail polish too much, but this is a brand that people love to hear about, so we will discuss it. Yep. And I think we also have another nail polish thing, because it's a quiet week, so nail polish is okay. peaking into the episode. Uh, we've got some new releases from Holo Taco, so Christine from Simply Nail Logical. Um, people always go nuts for these, so let's discuss them. Mm -hmm. uh, she's essentially released new shades of, you know those uh, sort of unicorn flaky toppers? She's yes. released three new shades and two pastel coloured cream shades, which again, I'm getting an Easter vibe. Spring, yep. Easter, um, I'm seeing 
the makeup going there. So there's three shades of Unicorn Skin Nail Polish. The first one is Galactic. It's an iridescent flaky topper that lights up nails with an electric green glow. Over a dark base, it shifts from bright green to a hint of purple. And over a light base, it appears pink with pops of yellow. Uh, the Sonic one is a blue opal glow and over a dark base, it looks uh, like a vibrant blue, but over a light base, it looks yellow, which is a cool mm -hmm. color shift. The last shade, Luna, is a golden yellow flash with a hint of green over a dark base and over a light base, it's a bright cyan, purple and pink. So they're very, very color shifty depending on what you put them over. And then you have What Do You Pink, which is a cool toned bubblegum pink cream and Scientific, like Scientific, I get it. It's an aqua, aqua blue cream. Um, so the Unicorn Skins are 13 US dollars each. The cream shades are 11 US dollars or you can buy the whole collection in a limited edition collector's box for 60 US dollars available now. Holo Taco. Again, I'm getting major Easter sort of vibes with this. Um, and I love mm. the color shifting. I particularly like the blue one because over black, it looks great. And then um, over the light, it looks so completely different. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but the cream shades look so stunning on her nails. They look so even and so like perfected. I just, I want to pick them off. I don't know why I want to do they, that. I do. <laughs> they do look really good. This is one of those brands that's on my list. Like one yeah. day I look forward to trying it. And I pretty much want to try everything. Like I want to try one of her creme polishes. I want to try one of her flaky unicorn skins. I want to try her glitters. Um, I think this is one of those brands where when we compare them to Becca... You can really see what it takes to be on the pulse with what's current and hip and up to date and what's not. Yeah, I agree. Christine knows her market. She knows what she's doing. Um, yeah, I think this is a great collection. People, it's probably already sold out. Probably. There you go. Before we continue with this week's episode, we do have some sponsors. Natural deodorant has come a long way. It doesn't mean you have to worry about that midday BO. Native deodorant is formulated without aluminium, parabens or talc. It's also vegan and never tested on animals. And they have a line of plastic-free deodorants in their most popular scents. Speaking of scents, Native have more than 10 available, including their classics and rotating seasonals. So you're guaranteed to find one you love. They even have an unscented version plus a sensitive collection that doesn't contain baking soda. Native also offer free shipping on every order in the US and 30-day free returns and exchanges in the US. I'm happy to say that I've officially survived summer in Australia using only Native deodorant. And there was only one day where I was a bit stinky because I forgot to use deodorant at all. My bad. My current favorite scent that I'm using is Yuzu and Orange Blossom. It's a nice, soft, citrus, fresh scent that's perfect for the warmer weather. So if you're going into spring and you're looking for a new native deodorant scent, I highly recommend that one. Make the switch to native today by going to nativedeo.com slash beautynews or use promo code beautynews at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash beautynews or use promo code beautynews at checkout for 20% off your first order. We've all got goals. Be healthy and get fit. Find a good work-life balance. But have you ever thought about hair goals? Function of Beauty is a world leader in customizable beauty, offering precise formulations for your hair's specific needs. Here's how to get started. First, you take a quick but thorough quiz to tell them a little bit about your hair type and your hair goals, such as lengthen, volumize, and oil control. Next, choose your color and fragrance, or go fragrance and dye free. Then Function of Beauty's team determines the perfect blend of ingredients, bottles your formula, and delivers it right to your door. Every ingredient Function of Beauty uses is vegan and cruelty free and they never use sulfates or parabens. You can even go completely silicon free with your formula too. And Function of Beauty also offers completely personalized formulas for body and skincare as well. So you can customize your beauty routine from hair to toe. I've got to give a shout out to Function of Beauty's hair mask. I have it in the eucalyptus and peach scents. Both are very nice. But eucalyptus is my fave if you're curious. But the best thing about this stuff is how soft and silky 
it makes my hair. No tangles after getting out of the shower and no tangles when the hair is dry. Never buy off the shelf just to be disappointed ever again. Go to functionbeauty.com beauty to take your hair quiz and save 20% on your first order. That applies to their full range of customized hair, skin and body products. Go to functionbeauty.com beauty to let them know we sent you and get 20% off your order. That's functionofbeauty.com slash beauty. A good hairdryer is an essential tool for any hairstyling routine. The Panasonic NA67 Nano Hairdryer heats hair gently and evenly using an innovative back and forth moving nozzle, which helps keep your head cool, providing quick, gentle drying with no hot spots, because burning yourself when heat styling is no joke and no fun. Nanotechnology draws moisture from the air and creates super fine, moisture rich nanoparticles that penetrate the hair shaft keeping each strand healthy and reducing everyday damage. The Panasonic NA67 Nano Hairdryer comes with attachments for every hair type. There's a concentrated nozzle for precise styling and smoothing, the oscillating nozzle for gentle, even styling, or a full-size diffuser for styling wavy or curly hair. The three heat settings, two speed settings, and neutral color means there's something for everyone and every hair type. I like the idea of an oscillating nozzle. Anyone who has heat styled knows how it feels to burn themselves so having the nozzle maintain movement for you in harder to reach areas sounds helpful hopefully hotspot burns are a thing of the past to find out more or purchase the Panasonic NA67 nano hairdryer you can shop now on Amazon by clicking the link in the description box okay next up we have a few releases from Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics so um, let's start with the highlighters so um, we've got three highlighters here. We've got the Accent Light Highlighter. These are 29 US dollars each. They're a super creamy highlighter that gives you light with every swipe. Comes in eight shades, five of the most loved shades, and three new shades. And two shades come in a mini size for $16. Then we have the Mood Light Luminous Powder. These are 32 US dollars. So these are loose powders. They're available in six shades. Five are the original shades and there is one new shade. And then we have Beaming Light. It's $24 each. Um, they're calling this Silky Soft Ultra Beaming Highlighter. Available in seven shades. Five are original, two are new. They are out now when you are watching this. Right, so if it seems like deja vu, it's because these highlighters came out about two years ago so this is sort of what we're talking about this could have been an update um, pretty much the pressed highlighters they were taken from two quad palettes that were released um, so they've just been repackaged in individual pans and also the two minis which is a great idea and then the other loose highlighters have been repackaged and new shades added so if it sounds familiar it's because it is uh, we've seen this before but um, yeah she's sort of just revamped her highlighter range. And then we have the bronze and blushing duos. So these build a flawlessly blended sun-kissed bronze look. Their complementary soft matte bronzer and satin blush delivers a soft focus, blurred finish and brush on like second skin. They're 36 US dollars each and they are available now at Jaclyn Cosmetics. Also coming to Ulta online and in select retail locations on the 7th of March. So there's seven duos um, in this blush bronzer combo. Um, they all have the satin blush paired with the matte bronzer. So there's no variation mm. in the um, texture of the products, but you can see on the arm here swatched the pairings. Now, look, she has picked the pairings fairly well. Um, like there's a really cool toned, almost lavender blush. Oh yeah, blush, they're blush. It looks like a highlighter, but it's a blush um, <laughs> with a really cool toned bronzer. And then next to that, there's like a peachy one with more of a warmer toned bronzer. So I get her pairings, but what, what I don't love about this, and this is gonna be my issue with all um, sort of duos like this. I, I, I wanna be able to mix and match. I, I mm. like a peachy blush, but like a cooler toned bronzer. And I feel like brands don't, they don't 
customized to people's taste. They kind of go, this is what should suit your skin, not yeah, yeah. what do you actually want to use. So yeah. I find that a bit annoying. Also, even though these are 50-50 sort of split pans, which, you know, is very, very typical, um, I use up a bronzer probably at a rate of four times the amount of a blush. So yep. for me, I, I feel like the proportion is off on this. And I think it would have been smarter if these were magnetic pans that you could buy the replacements of or create your own duos. Because inevitably, I would buy something like this. I would hit pan and use up the bronzer and barely make a dent on the blush. So you'd want to be able to then keep replacing the bronzer. So I don't know if these are reusable. I don't think they are. Um, but I think she should repackage to make that an option. And this would stand out as being a more unique product in um, the masses and masses of blush bronzer duos on the market already. But, you know, there's mm. a nice... Look, the deep skin ones, the red and oh, the beautiful. orange shades, oh, they're the ones yeah. that stand out to me as being something different in this collection, which I think is great. Uh, the rest is sort of like, you know, been there, done that. All right, we've seen a new skincare brand offshoot from a makeup brand and this time it is Juvia's skin which is interesting mm. um Juvia's place has been expanding at like record rate for an indie brand so this doesn't surprise me and we did say in our yeah. trend predict predictions of 2021 that um makeup brands are going to bring out more skincare I think we said it in that video anyway whatever um yeah. they're going to bring out more skincare because that's what people are sort of focusing on a lot more in the pandemic um but one thing I found interesting about this is that the owner of Juvia's Place, I believe it was the owner or it was, or it was a Juvia's uh, Place account, I'm not sure, but they put on their stories like a poll about like how much money would you spend on a cleanser, a oh. moisturizer, a toner. So doing market research, which I thought was really good because, yeah. you know, I don't think there's enough brands out there that use their following to get feedback from their audience to be like, yeah, yeah. would you buy a $20 cleanser or is your maximum amount 10 bucks? Like, I feel like that's, yeah. I, I sort of am curious to see where this is going to go if they do um, use their audience and feed off their audience to develop a brand that the audience actually wants. So... I thought yeah. that was interesting and it did imply that they're pretty much going to be bringing out a full skincare routine. It's not just going to be like, here's your setting mist or whatever. They're, they're actually looking yeah, at yeah. creating everything. We have a new skincare product <laughs> since we're talking about skincare. Uh, this is from Al Henriksen. It is the Wrinkle Blur Bakuchi Oil Eye Cream, Eye Gel Cream, sorry. My God, it's like wrinkle blur, eye gel cream. It's mm. all of the things that it could possibly ever be. Um, so this contains Bakuchi oil and yep. other things, of course. But, you know, if you're interested in it, you can go get it. Uh, it's supposed to instantly blur and reduce the look of fine lines and wrinkles, firms and improves elasticity, reduces the appearance of dark circles, refreshes puffy looking eyes and evens eyelid skin tone. Look, it just does everything, doesn't it? All of the things. It's yes. magic. Uh, it's available now at Sephora and Olhenriksen.com. All right, Pat McGrath is relaunching her Liquid Lust Legendary Wear Matte Lipstick. Now, this is a liquid lipstick and to be completely honest, I totally forgot that this launched back, I think in like 2017 when her brand started. I totally forgot mm -hmm. about this. So how Same. legendary are they if they A, discontinued well, I them mean... and mm. yeah, and didn't, and then people forgot that they even were a thing. So I actually mm. thought the first time she launched a liquid lipstick, and I said it in last week's episode, I think it was, um, the Divine Rose 2 collection, they launched two liquid lipsticks. And I was like, okay, they're finally launching liquid lipsticks. Um, yeah. A bit late to that train. But then I realized, no, this is old, old a, news. A re-release, um, yeah. So what they're saying is a legend returns for the ultimate encore. Are you ready for the most ravishing return of the year? Liquid Lust. Legendary wear matte lipstick is back with eight <laughs> new shades of luxurious cushion soft matte liquid fa uh, foundation uh, formulation that glides on lips. 
Uh, with one swipe, your pout is perfected with long wear, color, and hydration. So I'll read the shades out. There's Nude, Cabaret, Wild Orchid, Spellbound, Flesh 3, Elson 4, Divine Rose, Divine Nude, and Pink Desire. I'm pretty sure Divine Rose and Divine Nude were released with the, uh, the fuck, what's it called? Divine Rose 2 collection. Yes. Yeah, so I think there's actually just six new shades. Yeah. Yeah, so this is launching 5th of March on the Pat McGrath website, but my question stands, if this was such an amazing formula, where did it go and why did it take yeah. four years to return? All right, just really quickly, we've seen Sally Hansen release a collaboration with Mentos. So we did see them do, was it Chupa Chups? For a couple of years in a row yeah i think it was yeah. yeah so this is not unusual that they're pairing with like a candy company um but these are eight limited edition uh bright and pastel shades in their insta dry sweet treats for spring collection uh it's available now at alter beauty so um individually the eight shades retail for 5.59 each or you can buy two duos uh for 8.99 per duo there's a bunch of shades. There's uh, Confection Perfection, which is a soft pink. Cutie Fruity, which is a pastel speckled shade. So it's like a topper sort of shade. Uh, Future Fizz, which is a mauvey pink. Mint to Be, which is a true green. Orange You a Peach, which is a soft peach. Uh, there's Peppermint Dandy, which is a sky blue. The Fresh Maker, which is an uh, airy white with pastel blue flecks. And You're the Zest, which is a soft yellow. So most of these are pastels. I do think it's a little bit of a missed opportunity that the like the mint shades, why do they go dark, mm. like green and dark, not dark green, but like a mid-tone green and mid-tone blue when they could have yeah, really lent into that blue. pastel vibe? Yeah, because the mintos of those shades are still like pastel-y. Yeah. Like yeah. if you buy a roll of them, they're still pastel -y colors. So yeah, I, I'm not sure why they went with those shades. Look, it looks fun. It's very spring-like. It's I feel it's strange though. Mentos, this is the second sort of beauty brand they've done a collaboration with. The first one was Innisfree mm -hmm. when they brought out those powders. Yes, so Mentos are right. really trying to like come for the makeup community's money. I find it very strange. Mm -hmm. But anyway. But not yeah. a bad pairing. Oh, everyone, it, makes, it makes sense with Everyone wants to come for the makeup community's money. They're after it. They do. It's good money. They are indeed. They are indeed. Mm. Okay, moving on to Suva. We have the new UV Primaries um, palette. So this is one of their uh, liner, hydro, hydro liner, liner. palettes. Yep. That's it. Yeah, the Hydro FX uh palettes so these are water activated cake liners this one contains five shades you've got white and black in a matte and then you've got yellow red and blue all in their uv formulas it also comes with a fine liner brush this retails for 30 us dollars and it's available now so basically this is just primary colors and a black and white yeah i think this is really smart i'm surprised brands that, that do cake liners like this which is a few of them on the market now um they haven't done this before because you know yeah. when when we did see suva and there was another brand that did the cake liner palettes were like this is a great idea because you can mix the shades and instead of having like different pots yeah. you can have it in one palette and it makes sense because they do encourage you to mix and customize your own shades so i'm actually mm. quite surprised that this hasn't been done before because it's such a basic concept um and yeah. if you're not familiar with color theory from these five shades theoretically you can create all colors ever theoretically mm. so yeah this is great um i think this is would be great for people that do body art or makeup artistry like i'm sure they've got their own you know, primary colors that they work with anyway, but you know, why buy a bunch of pastels when you can just, you know, sky's a limit. The only limitation yes. with this is that you need to know color theory to use it to its full potential, which yeah. I remember I did art classes when I was a kid. So color theory is like ingrained in my, it's like 
second nature, but I know that for a lot of people, it's very, very confusing. So I think mm. there's only going to be a select market that are going to use this to its full potential. But I do yeah. want to say, Haley, mm. I wish they had a mixing well in this palette. Yes. So it appears like potentially they've got a mirror there. Yes. I don't know why. No. I don't know why the lid is not designed for mixing Yes, makeup. it should have a little like trough. shades on it. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I feel like that's a missed opportunity. That's what I find frustrating about mixing these liners together is that where do you mix them? If you've got the pots, you can mix them in the lid. Yep. Um, otherwise, they're telling you to mix them on the actual cake surface and then wash it off, which does mean there's a bit of waste mm. going on um, and it does get quite messy. So, I, yeah, I like the concept. The liner brush is great. Um, they've got nice fine liner brushes. I just wish there was somewhere to mix and, you know, actually use this to its full potential as well. So, but it's a cool concept. I think it's great that they've done it. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, you could argue, oh, you can mix on the mirror, but it's actually a lot more helpful to have a white surface um, that you're mixing on because then you can see the color for exactly what it is. You can see what the color looks like compared to white, mm -hmm. uh, which I don't know about other people, but I find that makes color grading and color mixing so much easier. It's like when I use um, Premiere Pro or um, like any other editing yeah. software, if there's a gray background or a dark background or a background of any color that's not white, I'm like, it throws me off. It makes it really difficult to see the really, really minute nuances between colors. That's why I, I find uh, Final Cut Pro really frustrating because they have a dark grey and yes, you can export same. it and yep. upload a video to YouTube and then on the white YouTube background you're like, this is a fucking pink video, why didn't I see yeah, it before? Yeah, or it's blue, um, yeah, yeah, but you, yeah, can't, you can't see it. Yeah, you can't see it. So yeah. I personally feel like that mirror, it should have just been like a white sort of tray with little like indents in it. From Urban Decay, we have some new eye products. So we have the 24-7 Shadow. These are $19 each. They're saying create long-lasting versatile eye makeup looks with the Urban Decay 24-7 Shadow Singles in smooth high pigment colors and four finishes for every mood. There's matte, satins, shimmers, and metallic. So these are basically single eyeshadows. They've reformulated their range. They're saying they are supercharged, caffeine-packed Urban Decay eyeshadows that blend seamlessly and can be applied wet or dry with a finger or brush to brighten and enhance the eyes. There are a lot of shades here. You've got colorful shades, neutral shades. Um, so it's basically just an array of single pressed eyeshadows in uh, little clear packaging. And by the way, I will say, this is how you do clear packaging. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like Tupperware, thank God. That's then true. we have the Moon Dust shadows. These are $22 each. So these are their Moon Dust eyeshadows. Again, they're pressed. They're in that same packaging as the uh, single shadows. It's clear, square, uh, little compacts and then we have the shadow sticks. So these are 26 US dollars each They are Eyeshadow cream eyeshadow sticks and they say that they are waterproof for up to 24 hours um, And they're all available now at urbandecay.com. Yeah, this is an interesting one because um, it looks like they have um, reduced their eyeshadow range Mm, so they, it looks like yeah. they've reformulated or repackaged or both and then got rid of a lot of shades that were really, really, oh, maybe historically popular. Maybe not popular yeah. these days. Maybe not but now. Yeah. yeah um, there are shades here that are quite familiar. So there are some shades like Half Baked and Tease and Virgin and Sin and, you know, things that we've seen before. Um, but they've really cut down their collection, which is interesting. Same as their Moon Dust. Um, they had a much mm. larger array of moon dust eyeshadows. Um, now they've only got five. So yeah. I, what does this mean? Are they just focusing purely on their, not purely on their palettes, because obviously that's not the case. They're trying to revitalize their single eyeshadows, which is what they were known for at the start. Yeah. Um, 
but it, yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting move. I think it's a good move because we talk about brands um, becoming dinosaurs because they don't mm. keep like trying to re innovate their existing products to keep it to the standard of the current market. So I'm glad yeah. they've done this. It's just yeah, it's just interesting that they've culled some really mm. yeah popular shades that like where's um ready color shifty one. Oh, Fireball. Yeah, where's Fireball? Mm, I know that I wouldn't buy any of these, but I like to me this is as boring as it gets. But I feel like if they want to maintain their single range, they definitely need to like reformulate, repackage to keep it looking fresh. Yeah, and that's what essentially I think this is. And to be fair, yeah. like we've been around the makeup industry for oh, a while um a so we i remember like two packaging designs ago or even longer yeah. than that so um i feel like this is not for us anymore this is for the new no. generation coming in yeah. that you know go i don't have a gold eyeshadow maybe uh dumb luck is my perfect one and that's where you start experimenting with color and i'm really hoping the formula is good I would definitely check mm. these out in store and swatch them and be like, okay, are there any that are amazing? I don't need them, but I'd want to have a play anyway. Um, but yeah. I do have to say when they relaunched their whole lipstick range, I don't think that took off really well. That was quite a few years ago now, like five or six mm. years ago. But their whole, they revamped their whole lipstick range and it's sort of just gathered dust. So hopefully that yeah. is, that doesn't happen with these i'm hoping i'm mm. i'm wishing for the best because now i'm seeing brands collapse and it makes me sad so yeah. i'm wishing for the best all right last thing we've seen another revamped palette uh mm. this is from viziart it's the grand pro one x so this is a revamped version of the grand pro original um mm. so they're saying back by popular demand i never knew this was limited edition i thought this was permanent no yeah so did i Anyway, back by popular demand, our artist-driven palette features 35 pigment-rich essential matte shadows for defining and sculpting eyes, brows, and cheekbones. Okay, they've got a long spiel. So essentially what they've done is they've taken their old palette that had large uh, pans but 30 shades of matte, and they've actually changed it so the pan sizes are smaller. So instead of 2 grams, mm. they're 1.5 grams. And instead of 30 shades, there's 35 shades, which I think is better. Looking at the two palettes, I much prefer the bottom one. So I think they've done a great job adding in more shades and making them smaller. This to me looks just a lot more appealing. And the shades they have added in, I think they look a little bit more fresh. Like Thistle down mm. the bottom is a really beautiful um, sort of dark uh, purpley grey and it's sort of like mm -hmm. where was that? That would have been great in, yeah. the, in the last palette. So I feel like they've fleshed it out fairly well but the thing that I find confusing about this, they talk about uh, makeup artist palette makeup artist palette. This is the one mm. makeup artist palette um, yet they've they've made it a lot more consumer friendly mm -hmm. I, So you look, know, okay. who's, who's, their, who's their audience? Yeah, yeah. And this is what is starting to irritate me about these brands that are like one foot in the makeup artist community, one foot in the like consumer, consumer community. Um, when makeup artists buy something, they have it in their kit and they use it very, very often. Um, they will easily hit pan on makeup at a much quicker rate than a consumer will because they use so much makeup. Uh, let's say you're doing like weddings every single weekend uh, and sometimes even during the week at certain times of year, you might be doing makeup on, you know, five to 10 people in a single day, um, times that over three or four times in a week, you're using a lot of makeup. So as a makeup artist, I always wanted bigger pans. Yeah. Um, and as a consumer, I want smaller pans. I want tiny pans so I can have a huge collection and not feel like I am wasting and not using so much makeup. Um, and I feel like a lot of these 
artistry brands are, you know, they want the consumer dollars, but they want the artistry, like, Prestige. hoity toity name. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, oh, I don't know. Make up your mind. Also, I'm going to say something that is going to really upset Viseart fans. It's a Morphe palette. Look That's at the colour layout. It is. Look at and it. I have, it is. And I have to say, looking at this photo where it's got the pans around it, the shades they've added in, like they've got like a little soft lavender shade and that grey purple yep. and a few other browns. Um, they've added in, okay, slightly different dimension, but you're mm. right. It's like, it's like... Fifty Shades of Brown with a pop of pink. It's fucking morphe. Yeah. Uh, look, and also, if it's a makeup artist palette, you could mix these browns to yeah, make the yeah. same fucking browns or layer them. Like, you yeah. know colour yeah. theory. So why is there 14 exactly. shades of beige and uh, five shades of really dark and, like, almost black when you can yeah. use a black to deepen any brown and get those undertones yeah, anyway? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I feel like it's, you know wanting their cake and eating it too kind of thing eating it too yeah yeah look i definitely think the palette is pretty i like the colors you know i look at the swatches and i'm like oh there's so much there that i want to play with but also you know based on what they're saying i'm like your argument is not sitting well with me yeah but go for your life do whatever you want yeah but this is uh still a limited edition palette they're saying it's for 2021 oh, well, there you go. So I feel like you've got probably all year to buy it. Um, and it is currently available on the Viseart website for $150, US, which is a lot of money, but for 35 pans, um, and if you are going to use every shade, uh, these are generally nice quality eyeshadows. The time has come to dedicate this episode of Beauty News to a Beauty News VIP. Oh, I lost my, I lost my train of thought there. I've got a puppy going crazy. Uh, <laughs> This week's VIP is Lee. Thank you, thank you Lee. Lee, for supporting Beauty News. And thank you to everyone who supports Beauty News in whichever way you choose to do it. Kat, tell us about the new little game we are going to play. Ha so, ha <laughs> We're going to start it really easy. Um, but what we're going to do throughout the weeks is choose emojis that refer to a brand or a product release that we talked about in the episode. And you have to guess in the comments what we're talking about. It's very easy mm -hmm. to start with. We're going to be doing yeah. a beach, champagne, popping, and a tombstone. So what is that referring to? It should be pretty easy. Tell us. But yeah. um, in future weeks, we'll try to make it more cryptic, just to make things fun for yes. us. Yes. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. Also, feel free to leave those emojis yes. down below, along with your guests. We hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.